Joining me now for reaction and forecast is retired Major General Paul Eaton. General Eaton, good to talk to you again, sir. Keith, great to see you back on TV. Long time. Thank you kindly. Uh, what do you expect to hear from the president tomorrow, and is it what you want to hear from the president tomorrow? Uh, Short answer is, uh, you laid it out pretty clearly, uh, we'll see 10,000, we, we expect him, him to say, we'll see 10,000 to uh, come back after this fighting season this year, and another 20,000 to come back after next year's fighting season. It is uh, far better than uh, what uh, some of us thought we might hear, and what it really sends is what uh, the message that soldiers want to hear is, what is my mission, and it is a transmission that uh, we are turning the counterinsurgency fight over to the Afghan National Security Forces by district and where probable and where reasonable. What, uh, what do you expect he's being told by the Pentagon? Are there, are there pressures on him to go even more slowly than it appears he's decided to? You bet. And, uh, I, and in defense of, uh, of soldiers, no soldier ever had enough of anything. You know, we all wanted more soldiers, more ammunition, more vehicles, more tanks. It's it's normal. With the with additional soldiers you buy down risk. Uh, the the civilian leadership of the armed forces give us our missions and we negotiate the resources to execute those missions. So there is a natural tendency to to want to husband the the resources to prosecute the mission. So this, this is a negotiation. Uh, the Commander-in-Chief hears what uh, the generals uh, have to say and their advice, but the Commander-in-Chief decides, and the generals will execute, and they'll do a great job of it. The, uh, the arguments relative to uh, getting bin Laden, is the death of bin Laden actually relevant at all um, to the decisions about where our troop levels go in Afghanistan? Indeed. Uh, there, there, was a, there was a friendship issue. There, there was a there was a beholding issue between bin Laden and Mullah Omar, the Taliban. And because bin Laden had been very helpful to the Taliban when the Soviets were occupying the uh, uh, Afghanistan, th there was a quid pro quo that we had to deal with. With Osama bin Laden dead, Mullah Omar is no longer tied in a friendship basis to al-Qaeda and is able to work on his pure interests, which uh, do not include al-Qaeda to the best of our knowledge. Two quotes that we just heard. Uh, Secretary Gates talked about the cost of 9-11 because we left Afghanistan in 1989. Senator McCain said, we abandoned Afghanistan once, we paid a very heavy price for it in the attacks of 9-11. Do you draw that straight a line between those two events? Well, we, we allowed, nature does not tolerate a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And when we extracted combat power and uh, we extracted the support for, uh, for uh, local military capability, uh, it was filled with, uh, with a very ideologically based uh, Taliban. So when we look at the future of Afghanistan, it's probably best that, uh, that we retain a counter-terrorist uh, footprint. I would be very happy to see a continuation of uh, General Caldwell's mission to continue to develop the uh, Afghan National Security Forces. Mm -hmm. But that his work is really relatively recent uh, as far as truly uh, aggressive, competent performance in the development of the uh, of Afghan soldiers and uh, police. Major General Paul Eaton, retired. Your time and your insights are always invaluable to me. Thank you for your time, sir. I'm grateful. Thank you.